We talk about this age-old cliche that beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but who was training that eye? Shadism is someone with a darker complexion that gets less privileges than someone with a lighter complexion. Shadism is not being able to fit into society because of how dark you are. Shadism is the reason for division both inside and outside the African American race. Colorism is very much connected to racism. I call them kissing cousins, if you will, because one is dependent upon the other, right? And so colorism Insofar as racism is a system that ultimately prioritizes people with power, in this situation, white people, people with white skin, colorism is um, communities of color's attempt to re-inscribe and re-institute racism amongst and between ourselves. And so it creates a spectrum of sorts, whereas racism and white supremacy is white, black. On the ends of the spectrum, with colorism, it's light skin, dark skin. It's hard to pinpoint the history um, in a particular way. A lot of people point directly to Plantation America and the way in which you recognize those who were enslaved simply was by their skin color. And so it was very simple to know who was free and who was not. If you were white, you were free. If you were black, you were enslaved. But of course, what we know also with the history of enslavement was a history of miscegenation, or that is the mixing of the races. And so. When the races began to mix, it, it kind of created this kind of conundrum for society. How do we recognize people as free or enslaved when you've got people coming all shades in between? And so here we start seeing a whole bunch of laws and legal classifications about people's freedom based upon skin color. What ends up happening is that um, folks who are lighter skin, the presumption is that, you know, if somebody who comes fresh off the boat looks like me, somebody who's lighter than has European ancestry. And so in having European ancestry, the assumption or the presumption was that that person was of higher value, more human, more civilized. And so we start seeing value placed on people based upon the color of their skin. And so colorism really grows out of that kind of understanding about the value of people's um, being, being connected to their skin color. What messages do we get about light skin and dark skin people? that light-skinned people hold more power in this world and that the dark-skinned people have to follow behind and you have to try and be like us. Like, because we're light-skinned, we're what you have to be. You can't be black and be beautiful. And that's not right. Colorism affects my community a lot. In Asian communities, being dark-skinned is not really favored. I guess in Asian society uh, or Asian culture, dark-skinned people are more considered um, ugly or not like uh, pretty enough, not um, worth enough as like light-skinned people. Back in middle school, I used to be called dark-skinned and ugly and all this nonsense, but, and it used to like really hurt my pride and just hurt. I would look in the mirror every day and like, yeah, I'm so dark-skinned and ugly. I wanted to have straight hair and light skin and just be skinnier or not as curvy as um, as I appear or whatever. And I think that was because of society and the fact that to be beautiful you had to be light skinned and have straight hair and have blue eyes. That's just the idea we're given, that you have to be light to be beautiful. We are bombarded by images um, every day that speak to colorism, that affirm colorism, that um, facilitate colorism, even without people even having to say the words dark skin or light skin or colorism, you know? So that if you as a young girl, a woman, you turn on the TV, you open up a magazine, you go to a movie and all you continue to see are women who look nothing like you, who are put in positions of beauty and power and attractiveness, you're learning something from that. You don't put black women, dark skinned women, black people in the media, we're going to presume that they're not worthy to be there. My sister and I, who's lighter, she's my half sister, she's lighter than me. Um, we both went to the park. This, this dude walks over, this dark, dark skinned person 
darker than me and, and he walks over and he's he's ex and he's talking to me he's like what's your name and I told him my name and he he was trying to get my number and I was I was just like I'm not interested and I just really didn't want to be bothered and he said and I quote it's always the dark skinned girls and then and I was I just because now I've already known about shadism and I knew exactly what he was saying or what he was implying I was kind of shocked but I kind of like cover it with like with, with like a sh shy life like what and then just try to play it off well when I was five I went my parents took me to um, West Africa and I got darker and then when I came back my mom was kind of like giving me all these you know, lotions, these type lotions that would kind of make me lighter. I didn't really know about it till I was probably like 13 or whatever. And when I found out, I was really angry. I was like, mom, what's going on? And she's just like, I don't want you to be that skin color. You know, you're too dark. I'm not that dark and I don't want you to be that dark. That really hurts, so, but you know, I don't, I like my skin tone. That can be painful. If you're the darkest person in your family, um, it can be painful to be reminded about that. Or, flip that, you can be the lightest person in your family and fall in love with somebody darker and be told you can't marry him because he's too black. There's definitely the kind of macro system in terms of the institutions and, and the systems that make us feel the effects of colorism. But I tell people all the time, I feel like some of our earliest lessons and the most painful lessons we get from our family. There's no point of having Team Light Skin and Team Dark Skin. It's just, why are you choosing which team you're on when you, we're all like, this is not, we're not all the same shade, but we're all one race. What is the point of having, what is the point of isolating ourselves? We should be all together. You know, I don't find Team Light Skin, Team Dark Skin funny. Like, I get people's intention, some people's intention. You know, I do take some time when I'm on Twitter or I'm on social media, Instagram, I'll search the hashtags just to see what's up there. And oftentimes, um, you see the jokes, but more often than not, I just see people trying to identify. And so for me, that's the question, right? So now that you put Team Light Skin up there, what do you want me to know about you, right? What's different about you than the person who uses Team dark skin like there's an assumption that runs through these hashtags that people aren't talking about and it's something that's understood within our community that if I put team light skin I am a value now when I think about it why should I care if people say yeah you're ugly and you're dark skin until I started learning more about myself and who I am as a person and my cultural and my background and my African roots and just learning about those things. I think now my perception of beauty has changed. Um, it helped for me to learn the history. It helped for me to have language for it so that it wasn't just about me personally. It helped for me to know that there were other women who were having this experience. It helped for me to know that it was bigger things at play. While I would love to say, let's go to the store right now and let's get a magazine with a sister that looks just like you on the cover, Odds are we may not find her, but there's, some, there's a magazine somewhere, right? So maybe you gotta go find it, or maybe you gotta create it. It is up to you and how you see yourself and how you judge yourself. Um, I think you should define beauty for yourself. And if you think straight hair and being skinny is beautiful, then that works for you. But if I think my kinky hair is beautiful and my dark skin is beautiful, then that works for me and then I should accept that and welcome that. I've always wanted to do something within this conversation on colorism that's just affirmative. Right now, the project that I'm working on, it's ongoing. Um, it's called Pretty Period. And it is a, you know, just entitled, it is a response to the often backhanded compliment that we get, you know, you're pretty for a dark skin girl. Um, a compliment, which is not a compliment, has always bothered me. And so really it's about getting people to think differently about what they're experiencing and what they're seeing, and then also checking us all to rethink where we get our notions of beauty from. Every shade is beautiful. You just have to embrace it. 
The shade of your skin does not define your beauty and worth. We lost our names and became colors. Don't throw shade on your shade. 